I tell the story of a monk who was an expert in the, in the texts. He's very proud of his knowledge. We went to see the Buddha, though, and the Buddha called him an empty text. We wondered why he was called that. And the Buddha says, because you haven't been practicing. And so the monk went around to various monks to see if they would teach him, and they knew that he was very proud. So none of them took him on as a student. Finally, there was this one novice who was reputed to be an orhant. The monk went and asked, pleaded with the novice, please teach me. And so the novice, to test his pride, said, okay, go down into the lake and don't stop until I tell you. So the monk walked into the lake and sure enough he got the edge of his robe wet and then his whole, his, his whole robe wet. Finally got so deep that he was at, the water was at his neck. Then the novice said, okay, now you can turn around. So he was convinced that the monk really was serious about practicing. And the novice's instructions were pretty simple. He said, that there's a termite nest. And by this you have to envision one of those big termite nests that they have in Asia sometimes. They're as big as a person. And the termite nest has six holes. And there's a lizard inside the nest. How are you going to catch it? And the answer is you stop up five of the holes and you watch very carefully at the one hole that you've left open. In the same way, the, the novice says you don't pay attention to your eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and body. Pay attention to your mind and keep careful watch over the mind. And you'll be able to catch your defilements. Which means, of course, that the mind has to be kept in a restricted space. You can't just let it wander around as it likes. Because otherwise it's hard to keep track of it. So give it a, a meditation object like we're doing right now. But then as you go through the day, you have to be very careful. Where is your mind right now? What is it thinking? And is it thinking of things that it should be thinking, or is it thinking something else? This is how you train the mind. Not just with your eyes closed, but as you're going through the day. Because remember the word for meditation in Pali Bhavana means to develop. And you can develop good qualities anytime. And so you have to develop some restraint. Because that's what mindfulness is. You give the mind a certain territory to stay in, and you don't let it leave that territory. Think of the image of the quail. When the quail stayed in the field, the hawk couldn't catch it. When the quail wandered outside of the field, the hawk caught it. In the same way, when your mind begins to wander away from its foundation of mindfulness, it's going to get caught. Greed is going to catch it. Anger is going to catch it. Delusion is going to catch it. So you've got to keep the mind in a restricted space. This is what restraint is all about. But then you give it some food and clothing and shelter here in the restricted space so it doesn't feel it has to go someplace else. In other words, you give it a sense of ease and well-being by the way you breathe, by the way you think, so that it feels good to be here. That way you can watch it, and any lizards that come out of your mind, you can catch them. Because you're right here, paying careful attention. Otherwise, if your attention is scattered around, the lizards can come in and out. They can crawl over your body and crawl all over your possessions. And you don't notice them because your attention is someplace else. So to catch the lizard, stay right here. And when you've caught the lizard, okay, then you realize you don't have to have lizards in charge of your mind anymore. And that way you can be a real human being.